All right, guys, welcome to week three of the 2024 Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. This week, I'm kind of doing a fun little twist on things in my mind. We're going to actually try to eat as much as we can out of the pantry. And the reason I want to try this is because I think when I lay out all the food at the end of this video and really look at how much we consumed in one week out of the pantry, it will give us a much better idea of Worst case scenario, if we were eating out of the pantry and couldn't go to the grocery store or things like that, how much are we actually consuming? How much do we need to put away? All those things that kind of run through your mind, especially this time of year when we're really starting to do our garden planning and we're thinking, did we grow enough tomatoes? Do we need to grow as many tomatoes? All those sorts of things are all playing in our mind right now. So I think this will be the perfect way to determine just how much food we actually go through in a week out of this pantry store. And I am going to also include, obviously, the store-bought pantry area as well. So stay tuned to the end of the video where we kind of uh, go through and show just how much we consumed. All right, so first dinner of week three of the pantry challenge. And we are having Cajun rabbit stew out of the pantry along with some corn flour roti type breads. Uh, basically, <laughs> long story short, I took out this bag of corn flour that we bought. I was going to make corn tortillas because that's what works best with the Cajun rabbit stew. You mix the rice right in and then you wrap it in kind of like burrito style. And because we're trying to avoid gluten, I want to make it with the corn flour. And it turns out that it's a special corn flour you're supposed to make tortillas with, not this kind of corn flour. So I had a quick Google on the interwebs and uh, the kind of consensus was it was a bread flour, not really a tortilla flour. So we're going to try and make these roti flatbreads and see how they turn out. So you're with me along for the ride and we'll find out. But uh, basically so far I have two cups of corn flour in the bowl along with a half teaspoon of salt and then we have one cup of water in the microwave heating up I'm assuming it just said to heat it so I'm assuming we want it basically boiling because we're going to pour it into the flour and let it sit to cool and soak into the flour and then we're going to make our dough so that's where we're at right now I've got the rice in the rice cooker to go in once we've got the hot water done and then the rabbit stew really is just going in a pot to heat up and we'll add the rice right in right at the time of serving. So the only other thing that's going to be needed for this, of course, is cheese. If I had lettuce, I would probably do it, but we don't have lettuce. So let's see what we can do with this uh, corn flour. So this stew is one that we are definitely going to have to make soon here because I only have one left in the pantry. So stay tuned for an upcoming recipe video on this Cajun rabbit stew. It's amazing. It has kidney beans, all sorts of good stuff. This smells amazing. So good. Hopefully my roti breads turn out good. All right, so there's my dough. I think it's worked enough. I think it's got the right consistency, hopefully. Well, I have no idea if that's what they're supposed to look like. But that's how I'm cooking them. I tasted an edge. It tasted pretty good. Well, dinner is served. I'm not sure the roti bread turned out like what it's supposed to, but it tastes good. So I guess that's what counts. But would I do it again? Not so sure. But again, the uh, Cajun rabbit stew. Mm, awesome. Even if we're not putting it in wraps with sour cream and cheese, it's still great just like this on its own. All right, so for dinner number two this week out of the pantry, we are using our chicken a la king that we canned up. I'm going to be making chicken pot pies with a corn and oat flour pastry crust. And we're also going to be eating some of our blue potatoes as mashed potatoes on the side, on the side of this. Now, one thing I have done is I have added some extra veggies out of the freezer from the garden. Uh, I've put in peas, red peppers, and some of our noodle beans from the garden. And uh, now we're just going to split these. One jar basically does two of my bowls. And uh, yeah, then we'll put the pastry on top into the oven. It'll go and uh, we'll have that with some wonderful. They will look pur blue. They look purple now, but they'll be blue by the time they become mashed potatoes. So. Stay tuned and we'll show you what it looks like all at the end. All right, so for this uh, crust for on our pot pies, 
I'm trying to do this as gluten-free as possible, not so being careful with carbs at this point, just trying to cut out the gluten and not use a wheat product. But I also have to work within the parameters of what I have in the pantry because we're in the midst of this challenge. So my recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of corn flour, three quarters of a cup of rice flour, which I did not have, so I'm substituting in oat flour, half a cup of sorghum flour, and a third of a cup of almond flour. Now I didn't have almonds, so I took my raw almonds and ground them up. So we'll see how this works. Basically at this point, I'm going to add the half cup of butter, a bit of water, form it into a dough, and hopefully we'll be successful. So I did a disastrous job of sharing that recipe with you for that pastry. So I'm just gonna put the link to the website where I got it from down below because I didn't explain it right at all. There was an egg in there, it was ridiculous. So. Anyways, long story short, it's now baked up. We're going to give it a try. I'm super pleased with how these pot pies turned out and our blue potatoes, although they don't look blue, they look a little bit more gray. I'm not sure why that went that way this time, but we've got them mashed up. We've got them all mashed up and I'm actually going to have them with homemade ketchup on them. I know I'm such a kid, but it will be delicious and I didn't make gravy. So I think this is going to be a wonderful meal. Our second meal of a series of seven uh, meals from the pantry. So let's enjoy and there we go it looks amazing now it's the moment of truth to try it it's gonna be hot so i'm only gonna take a little bit of the juice from the pot pie oh it smells good hmm actually it's really good so i will definitely put the link to the recipe down below because it is actually quite tasty, even with all the modifications I made. For our fourth dinner from the pantry this week, we're having curry. Now, not necessarily in a normal fashion, however. We're going to try curry on baked potatoes. Uh, and the reason why is because we already had rice once this week and when the kids are here on the weekend I want to have a rice dish as well. So I thought, you know what? Well, I shouldn't say I thought. Chris said, well, why not have a curry but with potatoes? And I thought, you know what? We could do that. I don't know if it's going to be my favorite thing. But I thought I've got some really gorgeous russet potatoes down there that'll make gorgeous baked potatoes. And I thought maybe baked potatoes with curry on top could be quite good. So that's what we're giving a try today. See, look at that. Gorgeous. Oh, oh, oh. Even more gorgeous. That's like a perfect baked potato right there. Now, the one thing I will say is russets are my favorite potato. I love russet potatoes, but Chris is not a huge fan. So I dug out this pretty nice sized all red potato, similar to our all blues, except for it's all red. And I think he'll be pleased with that one and it'll work perfect and we can get those cooked up. But the other thing that we need to get while we're down here in the pantry is our curry sauce. And I'm going to also do an August stew. I'm going to drain the extra liquid out of this and I'm going to have to figure out something to thicken this because we're not having rice and I don't think the potato is going to absorb it too much. But I'm using one of my, I always say, I'm sure I'm saying this wrong, but gel freezy, that's what I call it. Um, curry sauce. So uh, this one doesn't always need to have the coconut milk in it. So that's quite nice. I might use a little bit of yogurt uh, just to give it a little bit of a thickener. But uh, anyways, we'll take it upstairs. We'll experiment a bit and see what we can come up with. Uh, the other thing that I have upstairs already is an open packet of rabbit meat that we're going to put in this as well. So that's our meat portion, vegetable portion and sauce. So I think we're set. All right, so I am upstairs now and I've kind of done some prep and I'm ready to go. I'm going to just show you here the difference. This is that that all red potato that I was talking about. They're super pretty and pink and the inside is a ready pink as well. Really, really nice potato. It's a lot smaller than my big russet potato, but don't worry. I am bulking it out with a whole bunch of stuff that Chris likes to eat. But before we get into that, we need to start these cooking. And I do make my baked potatoes in the microwave with my potato express bag. <laughs> I have no idea where this came from. I got it so many years ago. But basically, you just put your potatoes in, put it in the microwave. I do mine on an eight power level. Love this, speeds it up so much, and they turn out perfect every time. It's kind of like my Pampered Chef rice cooker. Just love certain things, right? 
But anyways, I'm going to get these in the microwave and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about what's going into the curry. All right. So as I mentioned previously, this week is all about using stuff out of the pantry. So we've got our couple jars here, but we are still going to use some of the root vegetables out of the pantry as well. So we're adding to this squash, we're adding some rutabaga. I said squash to the curry. <laughs> we're adding rutabaga and squash. We had squash fries for lunch today. And there was a little piece of squash left over, so I just kind of chopped that up, and it's going in here. Squash is very nice, especially the sweeter one, in a curry. So this will work great, and we'll also bulk it out to make it nice and thick. So basically, we're going to let that cook off a little bit. Our uh, rabbit meat is already cooked, so that'll go in once this has had a chance to kind of cook up. And uh, then we'll add our stew and our sauce at the end, and check on our potatoes. Really it's super easy when all you're doing is opening some jars and uh, you know frying up a little bit of something. It's how I love to cook where it's just kind of no real thought involved. We're just throwing things in a pot and usually it turns out pretty good. All right so now that our root vegetables are in there and just kind of starting to brown up a little bit we're going to add our August stew. I drained as much excess liquid out of there as I could, but it's got uh, summer squash, carrots, peas, onions, celery, all that good stuff that you get out of the beans, all that good stuff you get out of the garden in August. And our sauce. And uh, our rabbit. And we're basically gonna put the lid on that and let it simmer for probably 15 minutes or so to make sure everything is good and cooked. And then I'll take the lid off to kind of cook it down and get rid of some of the liquid. It looks amazing already. And as usual, it looks like a lot more than what two people need to eat. I don't know why I can't cook for two. I really just have trouble with that. And while we wait for our curry to kind of steam off, I made some granola because we're all out and we need it for breakfast tomorrow or lunches or whatever we need. So that's gonna go in the oven as well. We're busy, busy around here. I think I might have to have this for dessert with yogurt because it smells so good. So good. See, look at those. Perfectly cooked baked potatoes. And here we go. Curry baked potatoes. I have to say it looks not too shabby quite pretty in fact so i decided to go with sour cream on top rather than mixing yogurt or coconut milk or anything into the curry so it's a straight gel freezy sauce and the sour cream on top so that's how i'm going with it this is dinner time for us as you saw i made that granola which is smelling incredible so we're going to be having granola and yogurt for dessert i can guarantee it but that is meal four in the books for eating out of the pantry this week all right so tonight on our fifth night of trying to eat meals right from the pantry, we are going in true pantry challenge fashion. Not sure if you can read that there, but that says Jane's Basil Stew 2018. That's right, 2018. These suckers are almost six years old. Now, I found them tucked in the back. I have three of these jars, so we're going to cook up the three of them because it's just Chris and I tonight. It's a beef stew. I've canned this again this year, so I have fresh ones, but these guys were what was left of the old stock. So that's what we are eating up tonight. Pop. Even six years later, still smells pretty darn good. And there we go. Some yummy stew. I didn't actually thicken it with anything this time, so it's a little bit soupy, but it has been in these jars for quite a few years. We have spent the morning outside. It is about a minus 20 day, which is around minus four, I think, Fahrenheit. It's a frosty one. So now we are inside and it's time for lunch. And James went down and he selected wonderful chicken barley soup. I think this one might actually be the turkey barley soup that we made earlier. Like I said, stuff doesn't last long around here in the jars. So hearty soup and tea. We should be ready to do wood this afternoon. So as I said earlier in this video, this week was supposed to be all about eating out of the pantry. But tonight we're actually having silky chicken for uh, dinner because uh, freezer space was at a premium and these needed to be dealt with. So 
We're having three silky chickens tonight, and we are going to be using on them a marinade that we received from Marilyn over at uh, Little Homestead by the beach. And uh, this is a, a ground hascap marinade. So it is really, really wonderful. We love it on the chicken. And I'm gonna show you a little trick we use to get full flavor. So basically I've gone ahead and I've separated the skin from the meat a little bit and I'm taking about half to three quarters of a teaspoon of the marinade and I'm dumping it down between the skin and the meat. You can even get it down, my cat is going bananas here, in and around that leg meat, which is really, really nice because you can push that seasoning all right down in there. If you were even wanting, you could put a couple pieces of onion or garlic. But what I've done is I've put them right down in my pot. You can see underneath. The idea is to keep the birds kind of elevated out of the liquid a little bit, but it's not really working with such a small bird. <laughs> so they're very, very interesting birds with that real dark meat. But now we're just going to drizzle some olive oil over top of them. None of us really tend to eat the skin, but it does crisp it up nicely. And then I'm just going to pour down the side about a half cup or so of dry white wine. And uh, we're going to put this in the oven without the lid on at 375. And then we're going to, after 15 minutes, put the lid on and turn her down to 325. And while we're waiting for dinner to cook, it's a family round of Catan. Good times around here. I'm going to build a boat. Dinner time and we even broke out the table for it. Now I know, you just saw us playing Catan. That's the only reason that this table was cleared off. Usually we sit in front of the TV while we eat. That's just a family way we do it. But tonight with our roast silky Yukon gold potatoes from the garden and beans and corn, but the best part I think has to be, I'm doing a sales pitch for Ikea. It's not gonna be lit very well. I'll do it on a separate thing with a little splice over. But anyways, has to be the lingonberry. I use this instead of cranberry sauce. Unbelievably amazing. Now I think that's probably one of the only places we've ever found to get it though, mm -hmm. is yeah. Ikea. Uh, so we're down to only one jar after this. So good thing the pantry challenge is only till the end of February because I sense a trip to Ikea is gonna be in order. Just for that. Just for that. <laughs> we don't even need to go through the maze. Just need to go to the front desk where they have the lingonberry jam. Anyways, time to eat up. So that's week three all wrapped up. Eating out of the pantry, for the most part, we did eat out of the freezer too. And obviously there were things like our potatoes and squash and root vegetables and things that I'm not laying out here. I'm just kind of going for those pantry items. And it is shocking how much we managed to consume in one week. I haven't totaled up the number of jars, but I'm betting it's a lot. I'm gonna just write it on the bottom here at the end. All in all, it just goes to show once again why we have to put so much food away throughout the year. So stay tuned next week, uh, week four, we're going to be doing some winter canning because as you're going to see in an upcoming uh, pantry tour, some of the shelves in the canning pantry are looking a little sparse. So it is time to do some winter canning and get things stocked back up. So that's what we're going to be doing for week four of the Pantry Challenge.